Hello everyone and welcome back to Games in the Attic. I'm your host The Tominator and thanks for tuning in. And on today's episode, I'm going to be checking out Urban Chaos Riot Response, Rocksteady's very first video game. Oh hello John, where are you off to? Oh, hello Tominator, I'm going to the Riot. And what are you crazy kids rioting about now? Burger King fry sizes. Burger King... Oh, you mean how there's no difference between regular and small? There's no difference between regular and small! I'm bloody right behind that. Wait for me, John. Be right back, gang. Before Rocksteady's Batman, there was urban chaos, riot response. Good afternoon. And it was art. But seriously, it's everything you'd expect a Rocksteady first-person shooter would be and you can easily see the origins of a studio that would go on to create one of the greatest video games of all time. It was released in mid-2006 to mixed reviews, with Games Magazine giving it a 7 out of 10, Eurogamer being a bit harsh with a 6, and the highest being an 8.6 from the official Xbox magazine, which Rocksteady decided to slap straight on the front cover. And with this kind of reception, it was hard to gauge whether or not the game was worth going out and buying or not. With the first-person shooter genre being so oversaturated at the time, Urban Chaos passed under a lot of people's radar, which is an absolute shame, and it's probably why Rocksteady took their next project in a completely different direction. In Urban Chaos, you play as Nick Mason, a member of the elite riot response team T-Zero, which stands for Zero Tolerance, and if that's the case, someone better give that reporter a fucking gun because she's got some major T-Zero. A group of psychotic terrorist revolutionaries called The Burners are threatening to take over the city, so it's up to Nick Mason and T-Zero to put a stop to it. Most missions start with a report from the mock in-game news reporter Lanny York from Channel 7 News, with her recapping the events of the previous mission and then introducing the next with breaking news. A gang nicknamed The Burners invaded the area, killing innocent people and taking paramedics and civilians hostage. As T-Zero battles against the violence, its leader is now coming under fire. Sergeant Adam Wolf is accused of torturing gang members who are in custody. Civil activist Gabe Peeps is calling for an immediate investigation. These news sections are well written, well acted, excellently presented, and helps elevate a story that's nothing more than kill the bad guys to something with a little bit more substance. And although your character Nick Mason never speaks, you do start to feel like you're controlling an action hero in a Hollywood blockbuster. It also strangely feels like Arkham Asylum. Firstly, the enemies look like they've just jumped straight out of it. Next, we have the same, very satisfying slow motion kills with excellent ragdoll effects with a dash of gore. Love it. Then you have sections where you'll need to equip your thermal breather to navigate your way through burning buildings to help firefighters rescue civilians. And then there's even a part where you climb into a ventilation system. And all I can say is someone at Rocksteady clearly watched too much Die Hard. Come out to the coast, we'll get together, have a few laughs. All the levels are set up in much the same way. You'll shoot your way through an area to reach an objective. There are only four different types of objectives in all. And while this might not seem like a lot, the combat is so fun and impressively immersive at times that it makes up for the game's lack of mission variation. The first person shooter core of the game is the star of the show. My favourite objective is the hostage situations, where you'll have to soak up the enemy's shots with your riot shield, wait for him to reload and snap off a shot. Do this two or three times and you'll be treated to an even more cinematic slow motion kill cam where the enemies will be killed by something in the environment or a psychotic news reporter. Then you have the gang leaders which you're asked to bring in alive. So kill everyone around them, then whip out your stun gun and take them out. Next you have the escort objectives, where you'll have to protect a medic or a firefighter and lead them to a civilian or police officer. And in the firefighter's case, you can order them to smash down doors or put out fires to progress through a building to find the injured civilians. Then escort both the firefighter and civilian back to safety. And surprisingly, these objectives aren't as tedious as you might think. At least the firefighter stays right behind you, doesn't get lost, doesn't get stuck on anything and does nothing to hinder the gameplay. Lastly, you have the timed hostage missions, where you're given a certain amount of time to rescue and evacuate a VIP. There's a nice weight to your walk cycle and overall movement, and gives the impression that you're controlling a human being and not some sentient floating gun. And when you're low on health, navigating your way through a level with the riot shield up, dropping it briefly to snap off a few shots, getting blasted back by enemy fire, you get totally sucked into the game. As for weapons, you've got your pistols, shotgun and assault rifles, then your grenades and molotovs, and lastly, the stun gun, buzzsaw, and meat cleavers, which are flying all over the fucking place in this game for some reason. Feels like I'm a crab in a Disney movie. 
Unlike Sebastian, however, we at least have a gun that we can shoot them out of the air with. But for me, it's all about hearing that headshot crunch. <clears throat> yeah! Oh! So good! And I was always chasing the headshot medals. The levels, while not very big, at least look different from one another and are well designed. And though the main story will only take you five to six hours, there's plenty of replay value with higher difficulties and medals to collect. Overall, it's hard to find anything wrong with the game. I think Rocksteady did an outstanding job and brought some original ideas to Urban Chaos that set it apart from the hoi polloi of other first person shooters of its day. Nice physics, excellent graphics for its time, and some of the best shooting I've ever experienced on the sixth generation of consoles. So yeah, it seems Rocksteady was always destined for greatness, and Urban Chaos definitely deserves to make its way onto the Xbox One and Series X backwards compatibility list. And now, we all wait with bated breath for Rocksteady's Suicide Squad. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all in the next games in the attic.